Welcome on in, guys. Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking out the channel. What a night it was last night for your Miami Heat. Thanks to the Brooklyn Nets, who go and get a win over the Indiana Pacers. Look, this is a little bit of a silly time in the NBA. We talked about this with Miami. Things are wonky. Things can get weird. You look at these schedules, you think you could figure things out. Um, right now in the Eastern Commons, probably only playing Toronto is is like the guarantee of oh that's you're gonna probably beat that team they're trying they're actively trying to lose so they can keep their pick but other places around it weird stuff is happening man you know like you know you have right now dudes on the pistons intangibles coming out scoring 50 points not enough for a win but i mean just weird stuff is happening you have last night the bucks you know they become the uh, the latest to fall to the uh, the Grizzlies with Jaron Jackson and all the young guys out there. So they fall to forty seven and twenty nine, and the Miami Heat the biggest uh, the biggest result for them yesterday was Brooklyn taking out Indiana one fifteen to one eleven, and that puts Miami currently in the sixth seat. Now, mind you. Business still needs to be taken care of by the Miami Heat. This uh, this is a razor, razor, razor thin lead that they have over the Pacers. Sunday is still critical. Hell, tonight against the Philadelphia 76ers is still very, very critical. But the Miami Heat did give themselves a little bit of a, a, a gift here because now they control their own destiny to keep out of this playing, essentially. You know, I'm sure that... They're still good. I'm not expecting the Heat to, you know, close this puppy and finish undefeated. But you definitely probably thought to yourself, we're going to need Sunday to probably leapfrog the Pacers. And right now, you just got to take care of your business and, and try and stay up on them in this whole situation. You know, obviously, Sunday still remains critical. Tonight still remains critical. But it is, I wonder what the feeling is of Miami. I don't want to, I don't want them to, to take their foot off the gas because I loved what they brought to the table against the New York Knicks, but I do wonder where they sit right now at 42 and 33. And really, realistically, three, them getting to three, not out of the realm of possibility, depending on who finishes there um, and the tie breaks. It's still there. You know, Miami's only a couple back in the loss column of the three seed. And, you know, like I said, very, very wonky times here for the Miami Heat. But one thing that is nice is seeing that the vibes are back with the team. Um, there's a couple of things that were circulating the heat yesterday on the internet. Some can confirm that they're real and hilarious. Others, I don't know if they're real, but the fact that I think that they're real is hilarious. The first one, I'm not quite sure if this is real. This was servicing uh, all over heat Twitter yesterday. It seems that the origin of this is NBA Reddit with possibly Jimmy Butler on a horse circulating and roaming around Miami. I don't know if this is old. I don't know if this really happened. I don't know if he's shooting a commercial. Who the hell knows? I will tell you, Jimmy Butler, probably more this year, most of it has to do with Hulu, uh, than any other year that he's been on the Heat. He is plastered all over the city. You see building billboards of him. You see electronic billboards of him. You see him on bus stop signs. Jimmy Butler is all over the place this year uh downtown so the fact that he might be doing something else now i don't think this is one of his side quests i mean unless it's cowboy or equestrian i don't really know but i do want jimmy butler to just show up to a game on horseback now i, I really i really would enjoy that especially if he was uh dressed like the purple velvet cowboy from the fallout boy video i digress the other thing that was funny is if you saw terry rogier he posted on social media, it was a picture of himself uh, walking up the court with Jaime Jaquez, Caleb Martin. Seemed like a fine picture. Didn't make much of it. Terry Rozier doing a little montage of himself. People do this on the internet. One teammate was not happy. And that teammate is Nikola Jovic, dude. And he said on the comments... Why the F did you cut me out of the group photo, man? Which is just adorable. Because, you know, I always picture it, you know, the Serbian accent. Hilarious. Not happy. Uh, Nico, hilarious, this guy. So, 
on social media, on his story, he then posted the other part of the crop out. And it's Terry Rozier with Nico. And it just says, me and my boy Undertaker. And first of all, glad that Nico got on the uh, on, on the gram for, for Scary Terry. Go follow Nikola Jovich. Second of all, Undertaker, huh? That's Goosey's right there. I love that. Um, so it's good to see that the vibes are back. Part of the reason for this, I will, you have to give credit to, is Kevin Love. Kevin Love comes back into the locker room. I mean, he's been, it's not like he's been banished, but Kevin Love has been a big connector of the locker room since he's been back, and he is now back with the team and getting action and back to his backup five spot and providing what he can provide, a different element that this team needs. And here was Eric Spolstra after the game explaining what Kevin Love can bring to the table for Miami now that he's back from his heel injury. Yeah, first, you know, it, it takes a, a real professional like Thomas, you know, to have an understanding of that. This is what depth is all about. Uh, you know, and obviously we've used all of our depth, but the depth, you know, becomes a little bit more complex when you have more guys available. Um, and he, he has really given us such uh, tremendous minutes uh, the last six weeks while Kevin was out. Uh, Kevin gives us something different. You know, it, it spaces the floor in a different way. You get some overreactions uh, that lead to open shots either for him or for somebody else that you can't necessarily script or make a play call for. Uh, and he just has that, you know, such great veteran experience, you know, for these kind of games, these kind of matchups. And then uh, hopefully, you know, what's ahead for us in, in the playoffs. It is what depth is about. And it's not an indictment on Thomas Bryant, but look, he was playing really, really great minutes for for the Heat. I think he has really great chemistry with Jimmy Butler on the court. So very happy to see Kevin Love back. Love, 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 love. Talk a little bit about his return. Felt good. Felt really good. Um, obviously, wish uh, you know. Felt like uh, I work hard to get my my foot right. It's just with that heel, it was it was so tough to actually. Um, get back out there and um, just get that heel bruise. It was pretty severe to, to just heal back up and, um, you know, get back out, out there on the floor. But the last two weeks were were huge for me. Um, and I uh, was available tonight, got my chance, and just went out there and felt good. Just try to make an impact. How close were you to coming back? I was close. Yeah, I mean, probably the uh, – um, probably like the Golden State game would have been the first time I – maybe could have seen some action um i'm trying to think about who we played the two games that followed as well but uh just happened to uh to be tonight i think we needed some some spacing but i mean you gotta tip your hat to tb he's been playing uh awesome really stepping up and uh finding a groove uh in there so i think it will be probably game to game and uh tonight was a night where we needed that spacing and guys to operate um especially because uh the knicks just say they bring that third defender um, so having that spacing out there was was very helpful. Obviously, you don't want to go through what you've gone through the last few weeks, but in a weird way, when you want to play for two and a half more months, yeah, can this kind of be a silver lining, blessing, one of those deals? For sure, um, no, because I feel fresh, uh, body feels really good, and you know I've been working hard behind the scenes to keep my uh, myself activated, in very good shape, and um, again, I think that's part of. Uh, what this place is about too is even when you're not out there, you're not playing. You keep yourself ready because um, you know you just you're either one play away. A team might need a different look, and uh, you know once you get healthy, uh, different guys coming in out of the lineup. But I think definitely it's, it's something that um, you know I look at as a silver lining. Is I'll I'll, I'll be fresh for hopefully which is, what is another push like we had last year. When I talk about shenanigans that, that he always brings, yes, the vibes are great, but he's always getting guys going on the bench. He's very, very funny in the locker room. He's shouting across. Like, it, it reminds me very much of um, – it very it very much reminds me of, like, the 1920 season where it's just, you know, joking back and forth, messing with guys during interviews. I was the difference tonight. You had eight and you won by ten, so that sounds like without saying. you. Without me, Bam wouldn't be who he is today. He would H. Quote me. I think that stuff is fun. And Haywood Highsmith was uh, 
was talking about it. Kevin Love's chirping while his interview's going on. And they settle us down like he loves it. Still for that moment. And then while Kevin was getting interviewed, Bam was like, dude, taught me to shoot the three. And uh, so I asked, uh, you know, I asked Kevin, what, what does that mean to you? And uh, Kevin was disappointed because Bam did not get a three off against the New York Knicks. Are you proud of teaching Bam to shoot threes? They didn't let him get one off tonight. I said they didn't let him get, get a three off tonight. Damn. They were guarding you at the three-point line. Man, listen. See? Man. See what you started? First page. Do you want to scout now? Yeah. I was going to give me a look up, too. I'm telling you right now, dude, I need a Bam out of bio three ball over Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid's list is questionable for tonight, so it's not a given that he gets it going, but I'd have a hard time believing he's not going to play in this game. This is, to this point, the most important regular season game of the season. Come, you know, opponent, team ahead of you. If you're not going to play this game, what game are you playing if you're Joel Embiid? So he's back. I would uh, I would be surprised if he did not go tonight unless he just woke up and felt terrible for this game, which, you know, listen, if – uh South Beach or Ashtron or whatever Tootsie's gets, you know, it gets it gets the best of any athletes down here. You know, it's a fun time, but I'd imagine that uh, that he's going to be uh, going, even though he is listed as questionable, um, as are all basically the main players. Uh, Tobias Harris is dealing with something. Tyrese Maxey, just something to keep an eye out tonight for uh, this 730 tip off from the Kaseya Center. But it is great to see Miami having fun the winning has been nice three straight you get that win against the Knicks on Tuesday now you can try and keep this thing rolling and and really put some distance between yourself and the Sixers keep things in a, in a positive way as you uh you get ready for this three games and four nights you got this tomorrow night right at it with the Houston Rockets on the road and of course that critical Sunday showdown against the Pacers so lots to look forward to this weekend for your Miami Heat and lots to follow